All right, welcome everyone to uh, Lead Generation Week. This is uh, day five, the last day. We've got um, three really great sessions planned for today. Um, and before we get started, I want to um, just make a couple housekeeping item uh, notes for you, as I always do. Um, first off, um, thank you to our sponsors, Lee's PDF Fluent and Drips, for, for uh, supporting the event and helping us get this going. Um, and also, uh, we want to always encourage you guys to participate. So um, this is a perfect session where you can ask uh, questions and get them answered. Um, so please do. There's two different ways to do that. You can do it within the app. There's a session Q&A uh, box to the right of your app if you're looking uh, on the desktop app or mobile. Um, or you can, uh, there's an icon on the video that says Q&A. You can utilize that. Type in your questions and it'll, it'll pop up on our side and um, be able to answer them for you as well. But definitely ask questions. I mean, it's the best way to get the information that's most valuable to you. And it also helps support everybody else that's watching uh, the session and get information out of our experts that are on um, today's uh, uh, webinar. So uh, please ask questions. So without further ado, I want to bring in uh, the panelists. Um, uh, we've got a really great set of, of speakers and presenters uh, for this uh, panel. Um, I want to introduce uh, David uh, Kiek. Um, David is the partner at Engine Fish. And David, I'm going to let you take it from there and uh, go ahead and introduce the, the rest of the crew and uh, let you guys uh, um, go ahead and start, start your presentation. Awesome, Michael. Thank you for, uh, for, for the intro and thank you for inviting us over. Um, can you hear me well? Just want to make sure that, you know, one more final confirmation that uh, we're, I'm coming in clear. It's good? Yep, it sounds loud and clear. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, thank you for everybody for coming and joining our session here. You know, we're very excited uh, to be with you right now and uh, hopefully you can learn something from us. So this is the session for generating high volume calls from paid search. We are using a AMA format, so an ask me anything format, right? And candidly, I'm right now pretty uh, honored to be with a you know a very experienced and uh, talented group of people here with Brian Carosi from uh, Callex and Justin Ellenberg from Mobile Fuse, right? I think together we ran some numbers, uh, and together we probably spent not more than 10 million in marketing dollars on paid search, but probably more than 20 million, right? In marketing dollars together, right? And of course, those are all with a good ROI. I mean, for me, what makes this really more exciting is that uh, these two guys are owner operators, right? So they know the guts of this, of this traffic source and how to make it work. <clears throat> and basically they built a lot of uh, information on top of that. So like from the tech, from the ops and, you know, uh, and training people on it. So, you know, uh, as I go into this, you know, just quick introduction, a quick agenda for uh, what we're going to do, right? So we're going to do a quick round robin of introductions to basically give you an idea of our backgrounds and what we have done. <clears throat> then uh, we'll warm it up with uh, three advanced techniques from each one of us that hopefully you can use in your businesses today. Then we'll move in into the bulk of the uh, session there which will last 45 to 50 minutes with the ask me anything right so you here you could basically ask us your burning questions we'll try to be as specific as we can so you can basically take these and run with it then towards the end we'll probably close up with one final takeaway right so from each one of us so if you basically had only one thing to take from uh, this session of ours to build your business what would that be so from there, you know, I'll just jump right in and do quick introductions. I'll start off, then I'll head it off to Justin to Brian, uh, so that they can introduce themselves. So my name is uh, David Piek. I'm partner at Engine Fish. So we're a legion, a boutique legion agency. We're basically up in the San Francisco Bay Area. You know, just across the water from uh, Colex and Brian. There, um, our specialty is uh, paid search to calls and basically build the ops tech and people around, you know, building keywords, optimizing that to uh, the right bids, getting those clicks to convert to calls, to qualified calls and distributing it to a set of uh, clients that we have. <clears throat> Our expertise is on that traffic source. And what we do is we take that uh, model and apply it to multiple verticals. So we're in verticals such as insurance, auto, home, life, health. Outside of insurance, we have home services, legal, and other things such as warranties. And so that's our background there. Um, 
you know, Justin, do you want to quickly introduce uh, Mobile Fuse to our viewers there? Yeah, um, <clears throat> Mobile Fuse started off when I guess Paid Per Call was kind of in its infancy stages. It went from um, the very beginnings to <clears throat> we kind of just took mobile and we took Fuse and we're like, hmm, we could probably fuse mobile and Paid Per Call together. And so we ended up with Mobile Fuse. Two company, it, it was just a company that really at the beginning of it, when I started teaching paper call, there was a lot of demand for offers and there wasn't any offers out there. So it made sense to kind of go get those offers. Today it's evolved into a real, um, a technology machine and a, a, a quality machine. So it's, a, it kind of uses technology to manage, um, how we take a call, how we measure the quality of that call and deliver that to an advertiser or which advertiser we deliver it to. So um, in running, you know, we probably generated or delivered over 200 million in revenue for different clients of ours and we continue to uh, reinvent, we try to continue to reinvent the wheel and provide value in the paper call market. Right on, right on. And uh, Brian, do you wanna introduce yourself as well yeah. on Call X? For sure, yeah, definitely some similarities between all three of our companies, right? Um, I'm Brian Carozzi. Again, thank you guys for inviting us and putting this together. This is a great opportunity to just kind of tell you guys a little bit about paper call and kind of what is changing in the marketplace. Brian Carozzi, I'm the CEO and founder of Callex. We're a technology and marketing services company that, again, focuses on driving thousands of inbound calls every single day for some of the top advertisers in the United States. We tend to focus um, on certain verticals. Our, our largest vertical is probably the, the insurance space. Um, and again, we work with some of the top name brands, but what, you know, fortunately for me, and this is, this is great to be on a call with, with Justin and David as well, but you know, I think about seven years ago, Justin first broke me into the industry where I started learning, learning from him and learning all about the, the techniques and mobile search. And, uh, you know, along the way, we decided that we needed to really get into the technology space as, as well. So we built out our own uh, call tracking and marketing solution that really gives us uh, what we feel is kind of a competitive advantage in terms of, you know, being able to really optimize our, our campaigns and then also allows us to start moving into some of the other distribution channels like Facebook and whatnot. I know this um, media, this uh, platform is, or this talk today is going to be all about search, but we do leverage some of the unique um, technol technological features of CallX to help us scale outside of search. So that's about it, thanks. Cool, cool, awesome. So. You know, quick introductions there with, you know, dynamic uh, experience set of people there. And I think, uh, you know, it'll be exciting for us to be sharing our information. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, jumping into the warm up, which is like three advanced techniques, right? So we ended up with Brian there, mainly because I think, you know, he can start off and talk about, you know, three uh, techniques that he, he shares with the audience that he's, you know, uh, learned as he's driven traffic on paid search. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that keyword research is, is definitely an important part of, <laughs> of running a, a, a search campaign, right? And I think that, you know, when you look at some of the verticals that we compete in specifically, like I said, auto insurance or just insurance in general, these are highly competitive um, verticals. And so I think that, you know, one of the things that, that we've obviously learned is that you want to use keywords or at least, you know, try to find keywords that will match the intent of what you want the outcome to be, right? So if you're looking for calls, adding keywords to your, your phrases such as, you know, phone number or call are really important. Um, yes, there's going to be less volume, but there's also typically going to be less competition. So, you know, again, using the example of auto insurance, you know, a lot of guys, they get into the space and they, you know, start building an ad campaign and they start with something very, generic, like auto insurance quote. Yeah, that's a great keyword. But when you look at the bid prices, you might be paying 50 bucks, you're competing with all of the fortune 500 uh, type auto insurance companies that are, you know, that have very deep pockets. And so your position is not going to be what you really need it to be in order to, uh, you know, get the results that you're looking for. So I use the example 
um, you know, instead of auto insurance quote, you can say something like auto insurance quote phone number. Again, you're not going to have as, as many uh, searches on that query, but you're going after the intent, right? Your intent is to find a consumer that wants to pick up the phone and make a call. Um, you know, the, the other thing in terms of keyword research, there's a lot of voice assistants out there. I know that I don't do it, but I see my kids do it all the time. I were like, okay, Google, do this, or okay, Google, call this company. So again, using phrases like okay, Google in your search queries will actually help you, uh, you know, pick up some additional traffic with the intent that you're, that you're looking for. Um, let's see. So that's, that's part one. With the ad type, <clears throat> one of the things that, that we've seen, uh, you know, when, when I first started with, with you know, going down the, the path of getting into paper call about seven years ago with, with Justin, it was call, they call them call only ads at the time, right? And this was actually even be, before that, we didn't even have such a, such a thing. But, you know, call only ads are what we primarily used at our company, I would say for the, for the past, you know, four or five years to drive a large volume of, of phone calls. Um, call only ads, if you guys, or call ads, if you guys don't know what that is, it's very simple ad, very easy to build. You put in your tracking number, the only clickable action is a click on the, click on the button, which leads to a phone call, very straightforward. Text ads are in a little bit more involved, um, where you actually need a landing page. So with Google, you specifically you have, and most search engines, you have the ability to run run text ads. Google, you know, gives us the call only ads, which is a which is a great feature as as well. Um, but what we've seen as of late is that call ads are not generating as much volume for us in certain verticals. And we believe that's because Google is definitely limiting the share of voice on certain keywords for that specific ad type. So as a result, in order to increase our volume, we've started generating a lot more volume through text ads. And with the text ad, that's just the standard search ad um, where the consumer clicks, they're taken to a landing page. When that consumer reaches that landing page, you can present them with options. You can present them with an option to fill out a lead form. You can present them with an option to make a phone call. You can present them with an option to do both or simply one or the other. So what we use to draw, I mean, we've always come from the, uh, the, the, the background that we, or the belief that we want to provide the consumer as many different ways to convert as possible. And so when we drive consumers to a website, to a landing page, we give that consumer options. We give them the ability to make that phone call, which is straightforward enough, and we track that through our CallX platform, or we give them the ability to fill out a form. When they fill out that form, we will then ingest that data, that consumer's data into the CallX platform, and then we will start remarketing that consumer through our proprietary lead to call automation technology, which will use artificial intelligence to simulate a conversation, all in an attempt to get that consumer to call in. So we don't do transfers um, per se, we, you know, from the, from the advertiser's perspective, all the calls that are being initiated are, are inbound. So that's with regard to ad type. With ad group creation and campaign, uh, campaign creation, every search engine marketer has their own, you know, thoughts, thoughts around this. I know that for us, I like to make my life as simple as possible. And so when I create campaigns or uh, when you know my media buyers create campaigns, I like to be able to manage the the PNL just on a very granular level. I like to be able to say, okay, this ad group and this campaign is doing well. Don't focus on it; it's profitable. And that way, I can really pinpoint the ad groups or campaigns that are that are underperforming, and then figure out what I need to do to stop the bleeding or optimize those campaigns. And so, one of the things that we've had a lot of success with is in terms of from the, from the beginning of, of a campaign, we'll go very, very broad. We'll create, you know, 
a couple of different campaigns, a few different ad groups, and we'll use very broad keywords. We'll spend a lot of money. We'll get data, and we then you know use that data to refine how we the phase two of our campaign build out, which a lot of times involves uh, building campaigns that use single keyword ad groups. So I think most people call them SCAGs. And we've had a lot of success with that. We'll typically assign a unique promo number or tracking number to each of those ad groups. That way, when I look into the CallX uh, system, I could say, okay, well, this promo number, this phone number generated $1,000 in revenue. I know in Google that there's 750 bucks in, in spend. It's profitable, leave it alone. Versus looking at another ad group, which with a different tracking number that says, okay, we spent $1,000 in Google and we made 750 in revenue. Therefore, there's an issue there. So ad group, ad group creation and campaign structure is totally up to you. I found it very helpful though. Um, in terms of managing profit and loss to use SCAGs um, and assign a lot of unique promo numbers or unique trackable phone numbers to each individual ad group. Awesome, awesome. I have um, a question for you, Brian, if you don't mind, yeah, David. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. So when you launch all these, these broad matches and you're starting out, do you expect to make money out of the gate? Nope. Nope, not at all. So that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great question. And not everybody is in that position, right? But um, we look at our marketing dollars as an investment, right? And, and so the goal is to collect data, not necessarily generate profit. I, I, I think that, you know, you guys probably know better than most, right? But um, very seldom do you make money out of the gate. It, it requires investment uh, in the, in gathering data, you need to gather data. And therefore, you know, if you can afford to lose more money out of the gate, um, you know, then you'll be able to collect that data faster than if you're spending say 50 bucks to a hundred dollars a day, right? It, it, it really helps to collect that data, refine, optimize, and then scale once you're profitable. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. So, I mean, yeah, so here uh, I'm a big proponent of SCAGs as well, right? So not only does it uh, allow you to optimize because you could, uh, you could prioritize the ad groups that have a lot more impressions and optimize the ads for it. And I, I think it's just much easier to uh, operationalize and scale out a build out, a campaign uh, account build out where you actually have SCAGs versus having to, you know, figure out which keywords belong to which ad group. So I'm a big proponent of and supporter of the SCAGs methodology. Um, so I'll take the, the next three there, then hand it off to Justin for his uh, final set of uh, three recommendations for advanced. Um, hey, hey, David, I, yeah. I wanted to ask the audience a question real quick, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. If you guys can put in the chat box, how many years <coughs> have you been, or, or if you are running AdWords right now, how many years have you? Zero if you're not, and then if you have ran it for a certain number of years, how many years have you ran it for? I just want to get an idea of, of how high we should go with the tech, like, you know, our tactics and strategy, or is it really, you know, is, should we stay high level and kind of go for new? Go ahead, David. That's a good point. Okay. Cool. So I can't see three, the chat. A we got a three, a 10. So we got Sarah saying three, Brian saying 10, Plamen saying 10. So these guys, some of these guys are veterans. Bill's got a zero. So you've got anywhere from not doing it yet all the way to old veterans like us. <laughs> <laughs> old vet. Did you say old? <laughs> I did say it. I did say old. It's, yeah. it's my birthday tomorrow. So I'm oh, getting happy old. birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, I'll take the next three there. Uh, I basically break down, uh, my, 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 <clears throat> um, my build out through like traffic funnel and data automation. Right. So like, these are for me, the pillars of customer acquisition, I think, you know, opposite to Brian, like for us, traffic is you go broad, right? So go modified and broad keywords versus exact and phrase. Right. And, you know, a couple of reasons for that. I think one is, uh, I forget the exact metric, right? But there, there is a, cert, a large certain percentage of keywords in a certain day that are brand new, right? I think this is a Google, uh, 
study before and or Google shared this information. I don't know how current or, or new it is, but there is a new set. But I think the more important one is that, you know, by getting broad and modified broad keywords, you actually get a cheaper click, right? And the, go the goal of traffic is to go and get as many of these clicks as you can uh, into your funnel. I think the, the, then, you know, the, the argument there is like, well, you know, it could not be as qualified as you want, right? Well, that's where the funnel comes in, right? The funnel for us is both your landing page, your landing site, plus your IVR, which basically qualifies people to, be, to say, are you looking for new service or new uh, plan or new policy or not? If you're looking for support, then, you know, just route them properly. Then at the end of the day, you basically use data, right? So you might see a keyword that just drives a lot of traffic and you don't know if it's, uh, you, you might think that, okay, this doesn't look like it's gonna convert or not, but you use data to basically say, hey, it does or does not, right? And data here means uh, long duration calls, not short duration calls, which was basically give you false positives, but long duration calls that basically say there's engagement in there uh, and that they're likely getting a quote or a free consultation. <clears throat> Second part of recommendation there is funnel, right? And this might sound simple, but it's actually not. Uh, testing IVRs, right? So you could uh, test IVRs and a change in the IVR can have a dramatic increase in your volume or your quality, vice versa, right? I'll give you a specific example here. So for uh, insurance, for uh, auto insurance, right? So, you know, typically there's uh, three questions there. Press one for new, press two for support, then they're dropped into a zip code, then they're dropped into whether they're insured or uninsured. Those are, those are the three questions in that IVR, right? <clears throat> and a, a tactic that you can use is you can actually combine press one and two with an enter zip code question. So instead of asking two separate questions, you can basically say, um, to speak to a agent about a new insurance plan, please enter your five digit zip code, right? So there you basically, well, you know, you qualify them and you told them exactly that, you know, if you enter a zip code, you will talk to an agent for a new plan. You took out the support question there, but you replaced it with, well, you're gonna enter five digits now, right? Which has to be confirmed if it's correct or not versus a press one and a two. So from there, you could basically, you know, put two questions together and increase the uh, traffic that's going into your call center, right? And there are lots of tricks like this uh, that you can do or tactics that you can do around the IVRs. The challenge with the IVRs is that I have not seen a place where you can do an A-B test on the IVR, right? It's usually a before and after. <clears throat> uh, finally, you know, for our data and automation, we actually optimize to two conversion events, right? So our bid manager, Algo, if you want, uh, works on a short-term duration call and a long-term duration call. And we associate all those back into the keyword that brought it. The reason why we do this is we want to balance out volume, <coughs> right? And, you know, depending on the set of buyers, there's people who, you know, are under optimized on their call center so that, you know, you will have false negatives uh, on some of these calls, right? Like, you know, they're a good quality call, but it's just that the call center probably is, you know, under understaffed when you're trained or the product that they're selling is uh, not the optimal one. <clears throat> um, so you can balance that out with, you know, uh, the short duration call, which drives volume and the volume as well can be used for like, you know, people who are, uh, if you have a, a large set of buyers who demand more traffic, you can, you know, definitely jack up the volume there. And in our case, because we have tens and thousands of keywords, actually unlock uh, keywords that are previously inactive, right? Uh, and basically, you know, get some traction for them that can be used over time. Uh, to see what the conversion rate is on the long duration call, right? Um, and to keep it simple, the way we optimize for this is basically pretty simple, right? So um, we optimize on the short term duration call on a CPA target for that. Then for uh, keywords with long duration calls at a certain percentage, we enable a higher CPA. The higher CPA enables a higher bid, which results in higher traffic for that particular keyword, which will deliver that quality and we just balance it all out. So that gives you a quick preview of uh, what we do as a, as a company. There's a question for you, David. Sure. Do you use professional voiceovers for your IVR and can you tell if there's a difference uh, in conversion using a robot voice? So, um, I've, so I have not done an A-B test on the uh, voice. I've always used a professional. 
right? So I have not, uh, but you know, my sense is that a robot voice uh, when I did it before. And so no clean test, but more like a before and after, like an experiment, uh, the professional does way better. Now the challenge is like, uh, if, it, I mean, people can hear it's a pro, right? Versus a regular person, right? A regular person who speaks well, I don't know, might be better. Uh, so I, that could also be tested. So, I mean, I can speak from experience uh, and, and this is why I probably took the technology part because I do, I, I built split testing into my own system <laughs> to make sure that I get the highest conversion. And I've talked, I've tried, um, having females and males I've had, um, to speak fast, speak slow. And I, I've found a more consistent with a female who speaks slowly and clearly, is the best conversion that I can get if I use an IVR. But the better than that is to not use an IVR. If you can get a call center to take the traffic without an IVR, oh, yeah. that converts absolutely the best. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we, we all agree that uh, the best uh, funnel is no funnel, right? It's to basically get the, the agent, especially if they know what they're doing in, to, in, in touch with, the, uh, with the, uh, the caller there. The challenge is that you do have to filter out sometimes, you know, uh, fall, uh, you know, callers that are, you know, looking for support that, you know, if it comes at a volume can overwhelm the call centers. Right. It does. And if the call centers are prepped for that, they'll, they'll do a good job. But if they don't have a 50 or a hundred agents plus to, to be able to sift through that. And if they're like, for, for us, we do a lot of health insurance. If they're licensed agents and they're taking these customer service calls, the frustration of getting the beat down of, of the customer service is it plays a role. And, the, and since we, we're not in the server world where there's like, you know, you're just sending clicks to a computer and it's, it, there's a conversion rate. You're sending real humans and you're connecting them with real humans. Right. And we're trying to get them to have a good conversation. If you beat them down with a ton of customer service, right. they will know your channel to be a bad channel for them. And then they're, when they do get a good call, they're going to hang up on that phone call. So an IVR is important to help that morale of the call center. Totally. Yeah. Agree. Totally. Yeah. Agree. Yeah, uh, you, you might also want to just just to mention, you know, I know that, uh, you know, there's different levels of experience here, but with call call ads in, in Google, you do need to, at least with the uh, IVR, you know, mention the name of the business that's that's answering the phone, right? Um, just, a, just a compliance thing. So that can get a little tricky if you're one of those affiliates that likes to run hundreds of different websites, um, you know, and you are using professional recordings and you need to have the name of that website or business in the actual IVR, it can get a little, a little expensive depending on who's, you know, professionally making these, these recordings or you're outsourcing. If you're doing it yourself, it's not going to cost you anything, but um, yeah, just a little, little tidbit there. Cool. So uh, I'll turn it over to you, Justin, for uh, your set of stuff. Awesome. And uh, Plamen, I saw that you answered a, a question. Um, I'll, I'll answer some of these questions. I see uh, several questions there, so we can uh, answer those as we go. Um, did you throw up? All right. So the, um, you know, I'm Justin Ellenberg. I, I a lot, some people call me the pioneer of paper call. I've taught a lot of people in this industry. I've been doing it a long time. I enjoy it. I've actually, here's a, here's a little plug for the sponsors here. Fluent actually drives really good traffic. We've worked with them for a, quite a while over um, when I owned another company called Quogen. Drips was another great way to recover money. Um, big shout out to those guys. They do know their business really well and they do fantastic. Um, next slide. <laughs> Thanks for driving. Uh, he, his is very pro there. There you go. So um, <laughs> I threw up a little bit of slides. Thanks for um, adding these in. I appreciate it. So how Mobile Fused adds value. And Mobile Fused is, is an extension of, of me and like all of my learnings here. And so I'm trying to um, break this down to the basics of monetization because it's not just about getting calls from Google it's really there's three parties in this transaction that are that are providing calls and it's important to see what the metrics are and how to measure them and how, how do you increase the efficiency of getting these calls to the advertiser that are good but to us or to affiliates the most important metric we have is EPC and it's earnings per call and I think that the 
basics are we have to understand that there has to be a good conversion rate and it has to be a good payout. You can't have one without the other because if, if a, somebody's going to pay you $500 a phone call but none of them convert, it doesn't matter how many calls you drive them. So it's really important to have this metric. The reason we use this metric internally is to know what we use. Go ahead and go to the next slide. What we use is earnings per unique dial. And we're able to route those calls efficiently to the advertiser who's willing to pay the most. I believe in bundles a lot, and I use bundles a lot in um, most of the uh, industries we put together because if a call falls down or a call goes to one guy and he doesn't like it, when you route that call to somebody who does like it, and as you start to learn where those calls should go, you're ultimately going to get the highest EPC, which allows you to go back to Google and reinvest that money in Google. And you're now, when you start bidding more and more and more, because you're able to monetize that, Google serves you more and more traffic as that goes. So we use the most technologies. Um, there's some good ones out there. Like, I don't know what technology you use. I know you, um, Brian, you have your own. Um, David, I don't know what you use, but we use Leadspedia. Leadspedia. Okay. Yeah, which is also a sponsor of this. Yeah. So, the, there's, there's several, there's several good ones out there and, um, you know, so, but we made our own just a long time ago. There wasn't, you know, we, we really wanted to do some things that didn't exist at that time. So we use our own technology and I'll show you why, um, go ahead and go to the next slide. I'll show you why we use our own technology and some of the thoughts of how we route calls. So one is repeat colors, Brian, I don't know how you handle repeat colors, but when, we get a repeat phone caller in. So go, people go to Google, right? And they type something in. They, they type in like, I need health insurance or whatever. And then they get the first agent that answers the phone call and they're saying, do you have a $300 a month in budget? And then they say no. Well, they hang up the phone and they call right back because they don't know what else to do. And so that's a repeat phone call. We actually look at that based on, on a per industry level. And we're looking at how do we handle that phone call um, do we send it to the same buyer again, or do we route it to a new buyer? And as a lead aggregator, most of the time, if I'm looking at the calls right, and if I'm looking at the data right, I'll say that some advertisers are horrible at handling calls, and some are good at handling calls. So we'll route that call to another person, which means that if it went to the first guy and he hung up on it, then that he probably didn't want that call, or he didn't know how to monetize that phone call. So I'm going to route it to a different buyer. Caller hangups is a and, and abandoned calls. What do you do when there's a busy signal? What do you do when there's a no answer and it rings for 30 seconds? So you have to look at these things and we look at these things and I know that that the technologies are getting better than um, how does let me ask David, how does how does uh, Leadspedia handle um, abandoned calls like busy signals? Uh, I think there's a, uh, a, a second window that uh, it allows us to ring before it passes to the next one. So you can actually assign like, you know, should it wait for five or 10 seconds uh, for the phone to ring? If not, if it does, it just moves on to the other one, to the next, to another buyer. Yeah, I think it's, it's, I think it's important to handle that. Brian, are you doing the same thing? Yeah, I mean, not, I mean, we, we tend to work with a lot of the, the larger um, advertisers, right? So we're not really running into that issue as much, but in terms of repeat callers, we, we handle it exactly the same way that you guys do. Okay. It's important. And this didn't exist. I, I, David, you could say it, but uh, like when did uh, Leadspedia start coming out with the uh, ability to handle that? Uh, I'm not sure. When I was started using it, I started using it probably like two and a half years ago. They already had it. So yeah. I could not speak to it. So when we built our technology, you know, eight years ago, none of this stuff existed. So this is really important that you pay attention to what's happening here. And you, Part of this is making the relationships with the advertisers to be able to stack them up on each other and say, hey, here's what we're going to do. Um, now, it's, it goes against Google's rules to send calls to multiple call centers. So you, you kind of have to, you know, see where, where you land and how you're going to handle that and what you're going to do. But if you're taking the calls yourself, you can because if you're the call center or if you're doing what Brian said and you're announcing your business name, usually they're not going to come after you for um, that. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, okay, so that's the question slide. So I'm going to answer um, Plamen's question. I'm going to let you, Brian, I don't know if you saw his question. You started to, to play on it, but I'm going to, I'll read it out loud for you. 
How do you see the future of phone leads with new voice technologies like Google Assistant, Siri, uh, Contera, and Alexa? Um, I'm trying to uh, say that one more time, Justin, sorry. Uh, how do you see the, f the future of phone leads with the new technologies like Google Assistant and the others? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, first off, I, I don't think that calls are calls are necessarily going away, right? I think that you're still dealing with the baby boom generation, which is one of the the you know biggest populations of disposable income in the uh, online world today. So I don't see this you know really new technologies really having a major impact in terms of you know the replacement of that um, that conversation. I think that the conversation will always exist. Now the way in which it takes place may, may change, right? So, you know, like one of the things that we really look at over at CallX is, okay, well, you know, does it have to be a voice conversation? What does a text conversation look like? And how do you facilitate the transaction between, you know, the consumer and the advertiser using text messaging? Like, I really think that that's going to be, um, you know, something that we need to address in the future. But for now, I, I still think that we're, we're a little early. Um, you know, I, I think that there's going to be, you know, a, a paper chat model. I, I really do at, at some point. Um, but yeah, I, what, what are your thoughts, Justin? Um, I think that, you know, as it evolves, Google's already evolved into, if you look at like the last three years, what they've done is they just threw all of those searches right into their search platform. They're trying to monetize them and make money off of them. And they're going to continue to do that. And they're continuing to learn. And they're also continuing because an exact match keyword in Google doesn't really mean an exact match keyword anymore. Right. Um, David, can you turn the, the screen share off? And then also uh, the... Have I not turned it off? I think I... Uh, oh. oh, you did. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the, the audience wants you to speak up a little bit. Oh, okay. I'll try. The, the exact match keywords don't mean exact match anymore. You put an exact match keyword in there. It's more like a phrase match now. And so Google's saying we want advertisers in here and we want them to bid wider. And then they just start sticking all of their, um, their okay Google traffic into the system and it's starting to be uh, responsive. But I think that they, I think that, chat and calls and stuff will all merge together and we're starting to do that ourselves is when somebody hits a page we're sort of giving them these options you know do you want to chat do you want a text message or do you want to make a phone call of course we want the phone call because that's worth the most to us and it's worth the most to the, most to the advertiser because they know if they get somebody on the phone they know their metrics really well and they know that they're going to close a certain percentage of those david do you want to talk to the future of of uh Google Assistant and the others? Uh, I'm not really sure, um, you know, how that was going to evolve right now. So I have no opinion on that. I think I do have a, a related question to the other guys around, you know, automation there, right? So we've definitely seen uh, drips and, you know, some of these other uh, AI guys, right, uh, that are, you know, um, creating um, uh, calls out of text messages, right? So I'd love to learn about, you know, what you guys are seeing or have you experienced around that. That's the first one. The second one is, um, you know, any any ideas or experience around um, avatars, right? So, you know, these are calls that are sent offshore, uh, where you know it's not a offshore person who answers it, but actually uh, has pushes a few buttons there to uh, engage, which plays a recording uh, in a in a local voice to. Uh, to engage with the caller for to, so that they can transfer them to a true agent. So those two things are eager and to learn about for you guys uh, as you guys, if you guys have seen anything around it. Yeah, I don't. I don't have much experience with with avatars. We don't really do a lot of uh, outbound, right? So I don't really have experience there. All, but I have been the recipient of you know some of those calls, and you know sometimes there's a delay, um, which really affects. The response. I'm, a lot of times, I'm hanging up before I even, you know, get to a sec to a live person, right? I mean, a lot of times there is there isn't a live person, and you ask them a question, and then they just have a canned response that actually makes absolutely no sense, right? Because they don't have the right option um, in their in their software. So I don't have a lot of experience in terms of using avatars. I just have been on the receiving end. I don't, I don't like them, but you know, I know they work, obviously they work. <laughs> they there work. are actually companies built on that, right? Like avatar right. call centers. For sure, for sure. 
Justin, do you have anything around that? Um, you know, it's, it's something that I've seen come across our lines um, and I've seen it, it's usually, um, it, it's pretty spammy because they have to get a lot of people on the phone calls to uh, do what they do. And usually they don't have TCPA opt-in. They're using this avatar and the, what they do is they have like, you know, 20 or 30 keys and all of them have different phrases and they just sit there and hit the key that corresponds to the answer that they're trying to get to. And then they walk through that, you know, they walk the user through like two or three lines of sales and then they're transferring them into a, you know, a brand. But the risk is huge because a lot of those guys aren't using TCPA um, compliant traffic. I don't, I've, I haven't used it myself, but I've been like around it and I've seen other guys that have huge success with it. When it first came out, probably, I don't know, five years ago, it was really huge and it was really successful, but now people are onto it and you're right. There's, there's those pause and you can kind of tell you're not talking to a re human because you ask them what three plus five is and they're like, sorry, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> cool. Um, Here's a question from Shannon on the, uh, the Q and a, um, so how do you generate insurance calls from a landing page without being able to use brand names or logos? Also, what is your preferred lead form software to use? So anybody want to take that? Well, Brian's the, Brian's the first insurance guy, so I'll let him start and I'll, I'll finish it off. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we use our own software for that, obviously. Um, and, and so the first part of the question was how to actually get people to initiate those, those calls off of a landing page. Um, yes. Yeah. So without using brand names or logos. Uh, I mean, I, I, I done it. I, I'm still doing it today and it just, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the, what the question is. If you drive traffic to a landing page and you give people options, they're going to take action. Um, you know, maybe your conversion rate might not be as high if you were to, use those logos um, but at the end of the day people are you know that's the great thing about search is that the intent is there they're looking for something and if you say call this number for an auto insurance quote a lot of times they will make that phone call or they'll fill out that form so the intent with search is is there um, I don't think that you're going to have a problem at least getting the action that you're looking for it's just a matter of how many times that that consumer lands on that landing page do they take the action that you want them to take. Right. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, I, I'll kind of give a very specific example. If the person types in SR 22 insurance and they land on your page and your page is about SR 22 insurance and getting SR 2 and 22 insurance, they don't really care about the brand. They're more about concerned with answering their question is where do I get an SR 22 insurance plan? And if you say, click this button to get an SR22, you're sort of answering their question that they asked in Google. So you don't need brands for that. But if they type in all state insurance quote, and then you take them to a page that's about state farm, that's not going to work. Or if you take them to a generic page and somebody answers the phone and it's not all state, they kind of, they, there is a, um, there's a lot of friction there with that. So you want to be sure that you're using more generic terms. Um, people kind of just type in all kinds of things. I mean, the people type in everything. Like you would be so surprised at some of the things that people type in, but like, I need insurance for my blue car. That's a Nissan Ultima. And right. then, you know, you can be more specific and just tailor your page to what they're looking for, whatever it is that you're going to advertise on. And the thing that I like to use, I don't use my own software for collecting. I mean, we collect our own leads on our, on through an API, but we use Unbound. Bounce. I'm a big fan of Unbounce. There's a couple other pieces of software for making landing pages um, that are really good. But Unbounce is something I'm familiar with. I really like it. It's really easy to set up and then just take the lead forms right into their own lead form and they actually stick in the back of Unbounce. So you can just transfer those via CSV. But the better thing to do in this world of like, you know, everything in technology now is take that lead in and do something with it immediately. Um, I, I don't know the other systems. I don't know if they take leads in and, and how that works. Uh, maybe you can speak to that, David. How do you handle um, it? Yeah, I do. So uh, we use Leadspedia and actually it's a pretty good way to do it. Uh, it basically, you know, allows it to, you, you could, you could easily connect it to your site and connect it to uh, your set of buyers. I think I'm just uh, doing a time check. We probably have like five-ish minutes. So I'd like to do a quick lightning round of questions because there's still a few of them here. I think, uh, so this one, Justin, maybe you can take it, right? So 
Uh, the question is, uh, have you done a test between key press one and key press two? So the question here probably is like, um, key press one for new versus key press two for new policy, right? Because uh, it seems like a lot of people uh, do a key press one for new, and it seems like everybody's just pushing that. Have you done any tests around this? I did flip the flip them around to see if it had any um, change in conversion. I, I, don't, I don't think it was a significant enough for me to remember is probably what it was is people don't listen to IVRs anyways. Like they're kind of just not, you know, they're, they've got the kids and they're cooking and they're doing this thing and then they hear an IVR and sometimes it has to repeat twice for them to hear it. So the best thing is that I found speak, give them the answer that they want and then tell them the key press. A lot of, some people build IVRs in their site for, for, uh, press one for insurance, but really what you want to do is give them the option, then tell them what key to press and you need to do it slowly. And I didn't really see a big difference when I swapped key press one and key press two. Yeah, cool. I'm with you. Um, question for Brian, probably. Um, <clears throat> recommended bidding strategy, right? So it seems like bidding for first phase results is not sustainable. Do you manually adjust bids or stick to automated bids? Uh, so it's like, how, what's your keyword strategy? Automated, manual, and you know, is there a position placement that you're targeting for? I mean, honestly, you got to test them all, right? And, and and I mean, I have campaigns that are running on all three different, um, you know, models right now. So I, you know, to to go for for true true, true performance. Google needs some some data, right? And when they're optimizing towards a CPA, I've seen my CPA great on some days, and some days it's just been absolutely horrible. So you know, and it'll it'll vary. So some days I'll you know hit a hundred dollar CPA and uh, using their automated strategies, and the next day it goes down to twenty. And then, but it's just once Google starts optimizing, they start kicking out a lot of keywords, and then you really limit your volume. So I tend to still to this day use a lot of, of manual bidding same here i basically use the manual bidding to optimize to a target cpa yeah. um, my, my personal opinion is that the uh the automation is uh you know they want to be like uh, facebook right and take control of your budget um uh, but they are not as robust as facebook um not only that i also think that that strategy is usually for uh, new uh, new players, right? Uh, new buyers, uh, mainly because you know Google right now is very complex. But if you understand the complexity, you can actually take advantage and beat automation. Uh, so that's that's my opinion there. A uh, quick question for the other well, two. I want to I want to I want to add in on that one because Sorry, I it. do use the Google automated strategy and like I don't if I'm spending less than five hundred dollars a day and so I wouldn't suggest anybody use it unless you're spending more than a thousand dollars a day because it 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 needs data like Brian said it needs a lot of data like when I start spending two to five thousand dollars a day is when it starts becoming efficient and if 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 it doesn't have that type of volume Google doesn't have enough data to understand what it is that you are trying to do but it is way more sophisticated than us and so when it starts to learn the demographic profile the psychographic pro profile the geographic profile it has all of this information out there way more than we have they know that if they go to this site this site then your site that they're going to convert and after you start spending thousands and thousands of dollars a day they start to learn way more than we can about certain keywords um, and that's just my experience uh, so far, at least. Yeah. yeah. Um, last two last questions uh, go, uh, go round to round, right? So one is uh, Bill asks a question like, what resources do you have online that um, you use to learn and get better on PPC or pay, uh, on paid search? And, you know, with that, you know, one key takeaway that people should remember uh, from, you know, from your learnings uh, as they apply to their business. So, Brian, you want to start with that? Then I'll hand it off to Justin and I'll close out. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I use a lot of keyword research tools, obviously, out there. Uh, you know, I think that Justin even had the uh, early on was just like, hey, just start typing in phrases into Google and then look at what the, the you know, other suggested keywords are and, you know, start going from there. I, I actually tend to use Bing a little bit uh, more for like my related searches. So, um, yeah, I use a lot of different a lot of different tools for, for keyword research and whatnot. Um, key key takeaway from this, I mean, I I don't think that you know all of us have been in the space for for you know many years. I don't think that there's anything new that at least within our circle that's being uh, expanded on right now. 
but I do know that you know Google is constantly playing with their algorithm. They've uh, it's it's pretty obvious that keywords that used to appear. Um, or at least call only ads that used to appear on certain keywords are no longer appearing, right? And so you need to, if those keywords are still uh, in your wheelhouse and you're looking to target those keywords, there's still a way to reach those keywords, but different tactics are, are required. And sometimes it may involve, you know, building out landing pages and collecting leads and using lead to call automation technology, um, you know, because that's what we've had to do. So, you know, the volume is going down, at least from what I'm seeing on, on call only ads or call ads, but the volume is still there for generating calls and you just might need to adapt and you might need to use different technologies to accomplish your same goals. Justin, you want to answer the, the one key takeaway and resources uh, for paper call? Um, the key takeaway would be test. Just keep testing because that's how we got here is by figuring out what doesn't work. Go in there and test. Uh, as far as resources, YouTube is a great one. If you want to, my course is 10 years old. If you want a copy of my course, email Jennifer at mobilefuse.com and um, I'll have her send you a copy of the course. Uh, I know that there is a guy on YouTube that, there's a, several guys on YouTube that have great courses out there. Um, I just don't remember their names offhand. Cool. I mean, I don't have any recommendations for courses. Uh, I think it's been a while since I took them. Um, I'm actually trying to learn other traffic sources such as Facebook and Native, right? Um, so I can't make a recommendation there. The one key takeaway for us is uh, specialized, right? So like, you know, special, we, I obviously, we obviously specialize in paid search and very, get good, very good at it, right? So you can specialize in one traffic source, whether it's that Facebook Native, outbound dials or whatnot, or you can specialize in the vertical, right? So be good at health insurance or auto insurance or, whatnot um, and uh, focus on that uh, that's very key right Good. focusing on vertical you can basically improve monetization that allows you to buy into the market versus you know if you were specializing tra traffic then you probably specialize in getting cheap calls right so that's my key takeaway there and we are over time uh, i really appreciate you know working with these two guys uh, and michael inviting us over uh, Michael, you want to take it back? Yeah, thank you very much, guys. A lot of great, so much information is probably going on for another hour. In fact, we should, I'll encourage you to get inside the app and continue to ask, answer some of maybe these questions if you have time. And heck, maybe we'll do another virtual thing just to uh, target this if you guys are interested as well. So thank you all. Sorry that we have to end it. Or, uh, end it. Um, but I appreciate you guys and adding your expertise and uh, wish you guys all the best. And we'll uh, connect with you later. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Sir. Thank thank you. you. Bye-bye.